If you guys could each go back in time and see any band in concert, what, who would you see and why? And also, I need to know the year. That is a great question. Yeah. A show. There's so many, but a show that I, I would always wished I would have, I just missed it by a couple of years, was with Van Halen opening for Black Sabbath in 1978 when they were in it to win it and <laughs> needed to show everyone in the world who the best band in the world was. Yeah. That's a pretty that's a pretty strong one right there. I'm going to go with the 1982 uh, Ozzy Osbourne tour featuring Randy Rhodes. I never got to see Randy play live. He's my favorite guitar player of all time. And that would be uh, that's when they were playing like sort of the whole catalog from both records and the Sabbath tunes mm -hmm. as well. So that would have been pretty awesome. Uh, this is going to be a movie that introduces heavy metal to a whole new generation. I think there's going to be people watching this who are not familiar mm -hmm. for each of you. Who are like the two or three bands that people who are coming to, to metal that they need to start listening to on Spotify or wherever they get music? These are good. These are excellent and probing questions. Great questions. I'm going to tell Great you that question. right now. Uh, I'm just off the top of my head. I'm, I'm just going to riff here. It's like, I think that one of them might be Metallica because Metallica okay. is like, as is both there, there are entry points of accessibility and, hooks and things that people who like other genres of music can go like, oh, I can sing along with that. But then it is uncompromisingly metal mm -hmm. in a lot in a lot of ways. So that would be one choice for me. The other one that's been on my mind a lot lately is a band called Judas Priest. I just saw them the other day, you know, 50 years into their career <laughs> with a catalog that is, you know, just so awesome and is unapologetically metal. And uh, I love- We Rock took, Rock. we took back in the day, took a bunch of the Game of Thrones cast to- uh, a Met Metallica show uh, in, in England uh, and kind of keel hauled half of them into coming along and they were not, this was not any of their jam in any way and seeing their faces when they felt what that music felt like in their bodies, you know, and it, it really, there was, there were 10 instant converts to the cause uh, and it, Metallica was to thank. One of the things I like about the movie, uh, one of the many things, is that you you in, you had Metallica and you had Guns N' Roses, but you didn't go with the the cuts that I expected, like the more mainstream. You have Whiplash, and you have Since I Don't Have You. Um, how did you guys pick those two songs? Was it ever almost something else? Whiplash was picked by Denise Luiso Morel, the music supervisor of the film, um, and and Tom's wife, and she picked that song and I married into metal it, by the way I'm married into metal it's, like if, if you if you find a woman that can like air drum accurately to rush like to yeah. you know, to yyz you know put a ring on it and she said how about this and i said sold that's fantastic that's perfect uh the since i don't have you is something from the very beginning i knew i knew we needed it it's tricky because it's it's a guns and roses song but it's not a guns and roses song so there were there are two sides to being allowed to use that music, but thanks to Denise, we we worked through the the red tape and we ended up with a song that that to me kind of unique was uniquely perfect for the the sequence we used today. You guys had to write "Machinery of Torment" for the movie. <laughs> um, can you sort of talk about how that song came together? Because you ultimately need that like a kick-ass song to be performed. So, you know, is there pressure in writing this? Talk, talk a little bit about how it came together. Well, I mean, Dan, Dan said, here's the task. There's a song, it's gonna be called Machinery of Torment. Tom, what does that sound like? And I was like, oh, fantastic. Like for me, it was, you know, I grew up, heavy metal was my first love, you know, and, and, you know, the first 20 or 30 shows I went to were metal shows. And so being able to tap into, when I began, when I first strapped on a guitar, that's all I was playing was riffs that were in the wheelhouse of Maiden, Sabbath, Ozzy, Scorpions, etc. cetera. Uh, and so to be able to have the free reign to like write a song, not heavy metal with rap, not heavy metal with EDM, not heavy metal with alternative music, but just write a straight up heavy metal jam was Hey, it was one of my favorite assignments that I've ever been given in my. Uh, I knew I knew we were in a good place by about the time I, I got to maybe the hundredth or the hundred and fiftieth time listening to this. Song. I mean, I probably listened to the song a thousand times in the course of making the movie. And by the time I got to a number of one fifty one or two, and I my head was still 
for still doing this because it's hard. Great songs don't always don't always you know withstand many 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 listens. And this one I heard heard a thousand times, and I love it more the thousandth time than I did the first. Uh, I'm just about out of time, which I can't fucking believe because I have a million other questions. But uh, Dan, I have to ask you. I am so looking forward to the three body problem. I, I just I just have to ask you. Um, what can you tease fans about it? Uh, I, I would say that production is going really well. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we love the cast. We love the crew. And it's still early days. But uh, but yeah, it's, uh, we're still I'm kind of I'm in I'm in full metal, full metal mode. I'm going to ask you one more question on, on the film. Um, I love lo talking about the editing process because it's where it all comes together. So I'm curious how this film was shaped in the editing room, perhaps in ways that you were not expecting. That's a really good question. I mean, there are there were lots of things. Once you start getting the music that you want and the music that you need, the music itself itself starts dictating the rhythms of the movie in in a way. If that makes any sense, so you'll start you'll have some musical ideas in your head that don't actually work out when you're in the cutting room. And then, like someone like Denise will say, "What about this song?" And then you hear that song, you say, "That's right," and that also changes that speeds up the sequence or that slows down the sequence. It's hard to get specific without, you know, getting into like classroom mode, but it's, it's a really good question because it really does, especially for a music movie, the, it's hard to underestimate how much the rhythm of the music itself starts to play into, into the, the shaping process. And that, that's one of Dan's superpowers is he really has the patience to, you know, watch a zillion takes and make meticulous notes on them. And, and like, I'm just like, I need a hot riff and I need to rock that riff right now, baby. Let's go. <laughs> let's sort it, let's sort all the rest out later. When's the guitar solo coming? <laughs> on that note, I already got to stop. I'm just going to say congrats on the movie. And again, gentlemen, I wish you nothing but the best. Thanks uh, very you much, too, Steve. Thanks so much. <laughs>